You can't, you can't record all this. No, so head out, out, out. Head out now. Hey, MFJJ here on Elk Shape with Iron Will Bill, master of the Iron Will Broadhead, talking about differences between two blade and three blade broadheads and what happens when you hit hard stuff. This man is an expert. Listen to what he has to say. He knows what he's talking about. So, Bill. All right, let's talk through some different scenarios here. So what can happen is you can have, say, a leg bone where you're hitting you know, off center on it. I mean, this is, this is what it would look like with a two blade, but I'd also say like a one piece three blade could look like this as well if you know the rotation was yeah, that one of the blades that. is like that, right? Yeah. And this would represent like a chisel point um, replacement blade type three blade head. So what happens at, at this impact, and this is going to vary a lot by, by blade thickness and steel type and hardness. So if you look at his broadhead design, this is very different than most broadheads that look like this. One, this is all steel. There's nothing but steel in here. And this, thi this blade section is thicker by a long shot than most broadheads. So this is kind of unique when you're talking about what's going to happen here. Sorry, Bill, go ahead. Yeah, th this was really designed for these hard bone impacts, but what can happen when you impact the bone, and this is kind of zoomed up here, you know, at, at this interface, you know, pressure is force divided by area. So you have this tremendous amount of force from the momentum of the arrow when you hit this bone, and the pressure is extremely high when you get a sharp edge hitting, and something gives right here. If, if your steel's hard enough, strong enough, the steel won't give, the bone will give, and you'll actually cut right through it. Yeah. If the steel's softer, you start smashing, you know, smashing this in to the point where it picks up enough area that it gets, it's getting stronger as it goes, and then, and then maybe the bone will crack, or maybe the blade will just, there'll be too much force, and it'll just, you know, deflect like off, or the blade will just break or get smashed in. Similarly on a chisel point, when this hits, when this small blade, typically that blade is, is thinner and as you zoom it up, it'll be a, a finer edge and a thinner blade. That, that's generally just gonna bend away or maybe break, break. If, if the hardness is higher, but that'll probably break off or bend away. You know, this might not get deflected as much as this, but if this is strong enough, hard enough, it, it can cut through. So that's kind of the scenario I think on, on a, type, a leg type bone. This, be a, this is iron will versus a conventional replaceable blade, chisel point, three blade broadhead. Yeah, every illustration, your iron will is on the left, your chisel points on the right is what you're looking at. This one is, uh, say you're hitting a, a scapula or or, or you know a bone that's more in this shape. The bone angle is similar to the to the blade angle as you hit. And now in this case, it's it's more of a chop because it's all hitting at once. <laughs> it's more of a chop when you hit all at once, and it, it would take more force to get through and be more likely to get deflected off. Deflected in that, in that case, um, especially if it's not hard enough strong enough to just to yeah. just cut through and that was kind of our argument the first night of why this might not work what situations this type of shape might not work in as well right. as this one in our spirited debate when i caught you on four hours of sleep and i felt like i really won that one right <laughs> <laughs> i felt really good about it and he woke up the next morning and said okay we need to get to a chalkboard and start talking and i'm like all right okay let's get at it anyway what, go ahead jo and this is what i after josh and i debated well uh, does a two blade or a three blade deflect more and i felt like well, it really varies on the situation, but this is what MFJJ was talking about when he said a two blade can deflect more. If this isn't strong enough, sharp enough to just cut right through, the force is too high, you could see how this could deflect off more than say this. If this blade just smashes in and it, it would stay more on route potentially than, than this. Well, and to establish where my argument came from, I grew up with a traditional bow hunting father that had a elongated style broadhead. The construction was different. Now I would still just call it a two blade broadhead or a two blade with a bleeder much like this is. However, this looks a lot different than what he used and the instances I ran into where it would deflect. Um, and I think after our discussions, you've convinced me a lot more that this is a lot less likely to deflect than the previous type of product due to its construction and it, it makes a lot of sense that this is almost like a chisel point two blade without the chisel so it's super sharp so you don't give up anything this is actually really really smart if a guy can afford them because this is really expensive steel so they're not cheap like more of your elongated structure where it's the tips longer it's going to deflect a lot easier because there's less contact position and what have you. If you if this same head hits like that, it's going right through still on this angle, and that's kind of what I didn't think a ton about at the time. I was just always picturing this, yeah. to, and that's why I was like, well, that's more likely to go through because it's got that direct contact point to break. So that was more my argument in it. But go ahead. Continue. Yeah, and I think it, it it kind of varies with the geometry and, and what it's going to hit and, and things like that. And now this is a scenario where you say you just hit a, a shoulder blade or bone yeah. more, more straight on and what happens in that case. 
in that case, looking in this direction, on what does that look like? Is it this is the cut, you know, through the hide, but also through, say, a scapula? You know, two blade would just be a single slice, and that's kind of the the least amount of force to get through, just that single split. This isn't too much more. This is this would be like this type of a head where it's a yep. main blade plus a bleeder. We got a main split, and then down behind that, you come and make make a, a smaller cross split. Yeah, and you were showing me pictures of a, a critter shot with that, and it looked like almost a square through the tissue, which would make it really hard to close, which is where I really love this guy because this thing's really hard to close. But this is going to give you a really similar result. This one might be a little more vicious in that right. regard, but this is also going to take more force to go through. So you're going to lose some right. of that. Right? I, I agree. This is, I think that's a great wound channel, you know, for going through the hide, opening things up. As you go through scapula, doing those three splits outward at once a takes a lot more scap. force. It yeah. almost has kind of a wedging effect, creates yeah. a lot more force going through it. Yeah, not to put you on the spot, but you've got a lot of customer feedback of going right through both shoulder blades of elk. Right. Like a lot, which I don't think anybody's got that. Like that's a dead zone contemplation without a heavy arrow, which is anybody who knows me who follows this channel is I hate heavy arrows. I think it's a lot possible with quite a bit less, right? Yeah, we, we've had probably 50 customers tell us they've got a pasture on an elk with one or both shoulder blades included. That's and, and, and that's a range of people from 60 pound bows and short draws to, to longer bows. So I think broadhead is key. And really the, the best of the best of everything is having it so it's it's so hard and strong, you know, a 60 rock will see hardness and that high compressive strength that it's just a lot stronger than the bone and it'll cut through gotcha. um, and, and make it through in this kind of situation. And they also offer some single bevel and double bevel options, which is pretty dope. But you pointed out that this actually had more force resistance than this when you tested it. Just a just little, barely. just barely. barely, just barely, right? Barely. It was totally bummed me out. And that's, uh, <laughs> you know, that's a low speed push down through, you know, high, high. Probably your first like measurement that. of shooting into well, tissue, which is usually right. where most of your energy is lost, is just trying to get through the hide. Believe it or not, people, that's actually the biggest problem. And very few broadheads are really focusing on getting that tip through with the least amount of force, which his emphasizes, while still keeping a construction that would be really hard to have the tip fold over on you if you hit something hard. I mean, it's a really smart broadhead. But understand, this crap is really expensive to make. Really expensive to make. So he's not just being ridiculous on what he charges. This is steel that's very, very, very costly. And if you look into products like this, he's right in the ballpark of what it should cost but he's making you a better product. So if you're looking for the best broadhead you can possibly buy, if money's not an issue, it's definitely something you need to check out. Thanks, it's, yeah, it costs a lot more to make, but it's really, I had a, I had a broadhead fail on an elk shoulder blade years ago. So yeah. this is really what Started this broadhead is designed for, right. is to make sure you're getting through that bone, getting yeah. to the vitals. And, uh, and and getting that elk, so. Yeah, I never would have really comfortable believed that that was an honest possible thing, but now you've got me a bit more intrigued. I came into this thinking we were gonna argue the whole time we were here, and we're actually bunking together, and we, we got along really good. Within the first day, we were only about 5% off of what each other thought, and I think we're probably more getting closer to 3% now, so it's, yeah, it's it pretty good. awesome. It's, it's a good perspective, talking to somebody who's just built a ton of bows, got a lot of experience out there, and then comparing that to you know some of the physics and engineering and things, and. Yeah. And, and debating it. It's been great. Yeah, it's been a lot of fun. And I've never sat and talked to somebody that understood aerodynamics and force dynamics more than you, which I, I hadn't really ever looked into you much. I just Dan had talked to you. And when I sat down in the room and started talking, I was like, oh, I've got 100 questions for this guy. I can't wait. So <laughs> this guy knows what he's talking about. People listen when he talks. It's important. Well, thanks, man. My pleasure, buddy. Appreciate it.